This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs The Playbook, and I have a special guest. He is president and CEO of Bell Four Spirits. Oh, by the way, he's also, in my opinion, the greatest Hall of Fame NHL goaltender of all times. Ed Belfour, welcome to The Playbook. Well, thanks for having me, Dave. Uh, much appreciate uh, your support and uh, having us on here today. Yeah, well, you know, I'm really intrigued always how people make the transition from professional athletics with no pun intended, the spirit of excellence that it takes to be a Hall of Famer and how that carries over into being an entrepreneur. And there are a lot of similarities in fear and pressure and teamwork and leadership, all these different things that I've learned throughout the years. What was the number one skill that you think translated best from being a Hall of Fame goal, goalie, goaltender into being an entrepreneur? Well, I think, uh, you know, as a goalie, it's a, it's a very individual sport uh, position in a, in a team sport. And, um, you know, transitioning uh, into the business world, uh, you know, for me, being the CEO, it's, it's very similar uh, where, you know, I'm kind of in my own little world and, and I'm the visionary of the business. And, um, you know, like playing goal, I was back there and, you know, everything kind of relied on me being really uh, at my best. And, uh, you know, when I was at my best, we did really well. Uh, you're on a team and you really rely on your team to play hard in front of you. Uh, you know, your coaches have to do a great job. Uh, you know, it, it takes a team to win. Uh, those are the things that I learned throughout my career is that you can't do it all by yourself. You need a great team in front of you. And that's what we've tried to implement with Belfort Spirits is that uh, team uh, mentality, philosophy, uh, and uh, try to surround myself with great people. And, um, you know, that's what we've tried to do here. We have nine on our team right now. Uh, they work really hard at uh, every aspect of Belfort Spirits. Uh, we take, all of us take great pride in uh, uh, promoting Belfort Spirits and doing the best we can at our roles. And, uh, you know, that's a, a key factor in winning in hockey is uh, everyone, you know, doing the best they can at the role that they have uh, been given. Uh, and our team does a great job of that. And, um, you know, we're just new at it, but we learn every day. We, uh, we get better every day. That's our, our goal is to always try and get better. Just just like when I played hockey, uh, you know, I didn't sit on my laurels after I won Rookie of the Year and the Vesnas. You know, I always tried to get better each year and learn from my mistakes. And um, that's the same uh, uh, things that we apply to Belfort Spirits. When you transitioned over, you know, you spent so much time to be such a great goaltender uh, but when you start over and all the athletes that I've worked at when I was with Lee Steinberg and, of course, with Warren Moon, I have to bring up my Canadian business partner, <laughs> another great Canadian uh, football player. But he, uh, he had difficulty because everyone assumed because you were so good at what you did that you must be good at everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, starting off in business, I know one thing that we have so much to learn. I always say the best thing I learned when I started my first business was I don't know what I don't know. So I'm going to find out who knows it instead of learning it myself. Cause it's really expensive when I learn it myself. You know, what was that uh, challenge like to kind of re-engineer people's vision that, Hey, just cause I'm a hall of fame hockey player doesn't mean I know everything about running a business. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's very true. Um, you know, when we first started this about seven years ago, um, you know, we were green and didn't know anything about it. Just like uh, when I signed my uh, pro contract in 87 with the Blackhawks, uh, you know, they sent me to the minors. At the time, I was devastated and, and heartbroken. I didn't want to play in the minors. But it was the best thing that, that uh, uh, for Ed Belfour and, and my career uh, was to go play three years, the better part of three years in the minors and, and learn the professional game. And the same thing has happened here with our whiskey business. I tell everybody we've been in the minors for about five years. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of ups and downs and, and mistakes we've made. And, and um, so that, that all comes into play, uh, you know, to help develop the, the brand and, and uh, the business. And I've learned from my mistakes. And, and like you said, you try to surround yourself with, with people who are experts. Uh, that's exactly what we did uh, at the Moonshine University where Dane and I went to school in Louisville, Kentucky to learn all about this business. We hired consultants from 
that school that uh, are still on our team, still help us on an everyday basis. So that's exactly it. Uh, I don't know everything, uh, but I'm really, really, uh, really willing to learn as much as possible. And, um, you know, uh, I think that uh, that's a key aspect of, of my personality and what helped, you know, get me through my career was, uh, you know, always willing to learn and get better. And that's the way I try, try to treat Belfour Spirits too. You know what, a lot of guys uh, transition to the why is not really an issue because they're so purpose driven, so passionate. Uh, th that ability is no problem at all. But where they have difficulty is where you seem to have just grasped it right away is I call the what, you know, what do I do? And I would love to know how you came to the decision to get into the whiskey and spirits business. Well, um, at the end of my career, um, I was trying to find something, you know, the first couple of years, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go do all these things I never got to do. You know, when I was a professional athlete, now I get to go hunting and fishing and hiking and traveling and, you know, visiting people and going on vacations. Well, you know, you soon get kind of, uh, you know, bored with that a little bit because there's really not that many people that have the time to do that because everyone else is working. <laughs> so you can only do so much of that. And then, you know, of course, you know, used to, to making a good paycheck, uh, that definitely comes into play. Um, you know, you don't get that paycheck anymore after you're done playing. So Dane had finished his career uh, right after mine, and we wanted to do something together. Um, my daughter uh, is a finance major. So uh, the three of us got together and we said, you know, let's let's get into the, the alcohol business and, and start researching. And so uh, we started with vodka and quickly realized that 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 market was very saturated and that the whiskey market was starting to take off. And uh, we find, uh, you know, whiskey much, much more uh, exciting and creative uh, than vodka. Uh, and, and growing up in Canada, you know, I was used to drinking rye whiskey. And, and so I already had a liking for whiskey. Um, so it kind of fit perfectly with uh, our personalities. Uh, we quickly realized everybody in the whiskey business loves to have fun. And uh, they work very hard, just like hockey players do. You know, we work hard and, and play hard. And, you know, when it's time to have a good time, we party hard. And, uh, you know, so it fits perfectly with our personalities, like I said. And um, uh, the business is very creative. I'm very creative. No two whiskeys taste exactly alike. Um, so I do a lot of the research on the barrels that we choose to age our whiskey in, uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you can create some really unique flavors from the whiskey. Uh, it's our own mash bills. We've learned everything, you know, from all the grains to the barrel selection, the wood selection that goes in the barrels, uh, the toasting and charring. Uh, that all comes into play. Uh, the yeast, uh, the enzymes, the type of stills, uh, the water you use. And we wanted to be hands-on with everything from start to finish. Um, and we have plans to build our own distillery here hopefully within the next year in Kentucky. Uh, we feel that uh, that's a, a great home for Belfour Spirits uh, Distillery and uh, we look forward to that day. One of the greatest challenges of uh, professional athletes, of athletes, of human beings, of business people, of entrepreneurs, and especially in the spirits business is consistency. Uh, but in order to be the best, it, one of the best to carry that spirit. You have to be very, very consistent about what you're doing. Did you have any tips or tricks or lessons that you've learned about how to stay consistent on those days where, you know, you, you just didn't want to do what needed to be done? How, you know, there's no doubt that you're a consistent performer. How did you stay so consistent and how do you stay consistent within the business that you're working in now? Well, you know, it's, it's definitely, again, it's a learning experience. And those, those days that I spent, uh, or those years that I spent in, in the minors, uh, perfecting uh, my trade, um, you know, you learn about your equipment, uh, you perfect your equipment. I was very hands-on with my equipment, uh, you know, tore it apart and helped uh, redesign it and, 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 you know, make it the way I wanted it. I was very hands-on with that. Uh, I'm sure the equipment manufacturers were pretty sick and tired of seeing me come through the door and, 
and say, can you do this? Can you tweak this? You know, let's try that. You know, I'm very experimental in the, with my equipment. And, and um, you know, you, you learn all those things in the minors and uh, you create a routine for yourself that you learn, you know, from game to game, from year to year, uh, that helps you feel the best you can on every game that you play. Now, you're not going to play your best every game. You're not going to feel your best. But over time, you learn, um, you know, little tricks of the trade that, that help you, even though maybe you're not feeling great, you learn how to get through that game and still win. Uh, or, you know, at least, you know, not get blown out, you know, like can happen sometimes when you're off. And um, the same thing applies that I, you know, with Belfour Spirits, um, you know, learn about our equipment, learn about, uh, you know, all the different uh, barrels that we can use, uh, the grains. Uh, so we've been learning all about that stuff, research and development, just like I did with my equipment uh, in my hockey career. And then we try and create a routine. And, um, you know, once we get our, our own distillery, those things will fall into play uh, just, just like they did for my hockey career, I believe. And you pay attention to details. Uh, everything that you do, you, you, you document. Uh, everything you do, uh, you know, on your research and development, uh, you, you hang on to the old samples. You hang on to the old uh, barrels that you, you use and you learn. And um, over time, you try to create that routine that, that uh, creates that winning formula. And uh, we do a lot of taste testing. Um, you know, we, we ask ex experts for their opinions of our, our whiskey. And um, I'm always about getting better and learning and making our whiskey better and better each time we, we make it. So over time, just like my career, when I first started, I was, I was a pretty good goalie. But by the end of my career, I was a great goalie. And, you know, I got that way by, you know, always wanting to learn and always wanting to get better. And, um, you know, those are the same philosophies that I have for Belfour Spirits. Yeah, and, and I can tell by the quality of the product as well as the quality of your play. One of the other interesting things is, you know, people think that you were overnight successes and you can hear from your story, even on the ice, you weren't an overnight success. And of course, in the business world, I've never met one person that was an overnight success. It just appears to be that way. Have you ever thought about quitting either on the sports side or the business side? And if so, what kept you going on? Well, there's always going to be those uh, bumps in the road, you know, tough times where you just feel like, you know, things are just, you know, not going my way. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not feeling the love. I'm not feeling lucky. Uh, you know, when I was a goalie, you know, you get people throwing stuff at you from the stands and, you know, <laughs> yelling all kinds of names at you and, and booing you. Even your home fans sometimes booed you. And then that, those were, you know, tough times and, and hard to take sometimes. And, you know, and of course you go back into the locker room and you're like, geez, what am I doing here? Like, there are times when you question, but, you know, for me with, with my career is like, um, I played this game since I was four years old and I loved it, you know, second to, to nothing. And, you know, we played floor hockey, street hockey, pond hockey, you know, played for the Stanley cup ever since I was four years old and all the shinny games. That's all I wanted to do was play hockey. And, and, uh, this is something that a lot of people didn't know, but I actually wasn't a goalie when I was a kid. I was a forward and um, a pretty tough forward, got in trouble all the time, lots of penalties. And uh, coming from a small town, uh, we had two other kids that played goal. And I was the only other one that played goal once in a while. And we got to age 12 and those two guys quit playing goal. And it was, it was like, no one else knows how to play goal, Ed. You have to be the goalie now. <laughs> So it was a good thing, though, that that happened because I don't think I would have made it to the NHL as a forward. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's about I love like probably those two kids. They always tell everyone, "Oh yeah, I started over L before <laughs> before." <laughs> <laughs> he was the third string on my team. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, la last question. You know your competitive nature. You're known as an extreme competitor, extremely emotional as well. And I try to teach entrepreneurs a lot of times how to blend that ferocious competitiveness with the ability to be 
patient and put our emotions to the side sometimes to allow things to happen, to allow the productivity that we have to manifest itself. Um, how were you able to keep your emotions under control when you're super competitive? Number one, on the ice, but also in business, I'm sure it is carried over and things never happen as fast as we want them or as good as we want them to. Yeah, it, it definitely, both those topics definitely uh, carry over into the whiskey business. And I would imagine any business, uh, you know, I had a car company where we restored uh, muscle cars and street rods called Carmen Incorporated. And, you know, we had ups and downs in that business too. It's going to happen with everybody. It's going to happen in life. Uh, again, you know, you just, you, you have to understand that those things are going to happen and you just got to roll with the punches and, and keep moving forward. Never give up. Just like in my hockey career, there was those bad days. It, we have those bad days in, in the whiskey business too. And, and you just try to, you know, think ahead and, and know that there's better days ahead and that, you know, you're, you're going to get through this. Um, so we've dealt with all those things. And, um, you know, I, I am a very impatient person. Um, but you just have to, you know, keep yourself busy, uh, be productive, and, uh, you know, work on the things that you have the ability to, to work on at that moment. And, uh, you know, with the, with the whiskey business, you definitely have to be patient because, you know, you're waiting you know, six months at a time to do tastings on the barrels. And you're like, you know, you're just praying that you hope that it comes out good. And the first time I remember we did our first tasting uh, of our first 12 barrels that Dane made, uh, it was, it's our limited edition VIP rye, uh, very awesome package, turned out all beautiful with the chalice on top. And um, um, I remember the day that Dane called me, uh, from uh, Woody Creek Distillery in Basalt, uh, Colorado, where he was doing an internship. And um, we made our first 12 barrels. He did it himself, and he was sipping on the white dog. And, uh, you know, he was like, Dad, the, the white dog is just amazing. And he was crying. He was so emotional about it. Uh, you know, did 12 barrels, and uh, he said, the white dog tastes amazing. Well, you know, we had to wait about six months before we got back there to taste it. And um, I got a chance to taste it for the first time. And I was just like in, just in heaven because I was so happy how, how well it turned out. Now we've had some samples that haven't turned out so well either. And you're like, oh my gosh, what happened to those ones? So you have to have patience. Um, you know, now we're trying to get our product out all across North America. Uh, you know, of course, COVID hit. And we only got in the shelves in uh, October of 19. So, you know, the, the last, uh, you know, five months have been pretty tough trying to get our products out across uh, uh, North America. And, and with Canada, with the borders being shut down, uh, we can't go to Canada this year. Hopefully next year we'll get there. And, um, you know, again, we, we try to focus on uh, the things we can control, which, uh, you know, some of our, our new production that we're we're laying down more barrels. So we go to the distillery and we learn, you know, from the past and we try not to make the same mistakes. Uh, but, um, you know, again, uh, there's good days and there's bad days, uh, hopefully more good than bad, like in my hockey career. And uh, you, you just keep in mind of those, those good moments and those exciting times ahead when, when you can celebrate with your team um, you know, on awards that you get for your products. Like uh, we've won some packaging awards on, on our bottle, which took us the better part of two years to design and, and develop. Two years we spent on our packaging. You know, that's a lot of time. And, and we had to have a, you know, I tell everybody this is like version 100. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a perfectionist and I want, you know, our, our packaging to be as perfect as possible. We're always trying to improve it. The same thing with our whiskey. You know, we're always trying to improve it. And, and my, my goal is that every one of our products is as good as a, a double gold product. And that's our goal is to, to win double golds. Double goals from the goalie himself. What an incredible journey it's been showing us the lessons of finding light, love and lessons in everything that you do. A spirit of excellence, no pun intended, in his career as a goalie as well, of course, 
in the spirits world itself. I appreciate all the great lessons, Ed, that you've taught us here. Make sure you go and try as soon as you can find it, the Belfer Spirits everywhere here in North America and soon to be in Canada when this COVID is over. Ed, thank you so much for joining us on Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.